this video came out here look this is jcs's second channel by the way it's just j this this is a very new thing it's not a new thing but yeah see like i don't know how much they i don't know what the difference between like why they put these two on here but i mean you know they put one out a year ago on narcissistic personality disorder and now they have two videos that are pretty much seemingly like the main channel videos. I don't know what the logic is behind putting them on here instead of on whatever, but here we are. We are going to watch as, uh, as you can see, it's the same guy. So we're going to watch this one. I already did the trigger warning. You know what I mean? I'm not subbed. I found out about this channel today. Thank you for reminding me to sub. So, see, look. They have a Reddit, apparently. I'm probably going to join that. I don't look at Reddit, but I might join it. Whatever. You know what I mean? Captions are on. Wait. Captions are on. I don't know what this one's about, so I'm, I can't give a specific trigger warning. I can give you generics. This is very oh, upsetting. The bug is still there. <laughs> the, um, the, the video in general, I don't know what it's about. Um, I don't know what's going to cover, but you know, it's criminal stuff. It's very upsetting. It could be very sensitive if you're not interested in this sort of thing and you're just here. I don't know. Let me turn off alerts and stuff since I don't want the immersion of the thing being ruined, but <clears throat> excuse me. That burp was for you chat. All right, cool. On the afternoon of June 9th, 2017, 26-year-old environmental sciences student Ying Ying Zhong. Yeah, it's a bug, guys. Yeah, haha, <laughs> bug on my neck. You know what's you know what's great? It has a great view of your mother. All of them, all of your moms when I'm having sex with them, though. Zhong was traveling on a bus to an off-campus apartment complex in Urbana, Illinois, where she was planning to sign a new lease for an apartment. She was running late and sent a text message to the leasing agent to inform them that she would arrive just after 2 p.m. After riding on one bus, she exited and tried to transfer to another, yet mistakenly waited on the wrong side of a street for boarding and missed it. She oh, walked chat, to the next the bus way. stop a few Fuck blocks you, away chat. at the corner of North Goodwin Avenue, where surveillance showed that a black Saturn Astra passed oh my her God, by at chat. exactly 2 p.m. Get out the it then circled way. back around and stopped where she was waiting at 2.03 p.m. She spoke to the driver for approximately one minute and then got in the car before it drove away. Huh. Wait, what year is this? Did, we, did he say what year this is taking place? Could be an Uber. No, you wouldn't sit outside of a car for a minute on an Uber driver. Nobody rides a bike in 2017. That guy's suspicious. Sussy bike driver. The leasing agent sent her a text <laughs> message at approximately 2.38, but received no reply. As the hours passed, Zheng's friends, aware of her errand and expecting her to return quickly, grew increasingly worried, and a missing persons report was filed to police at exactly 9.24 p.m. that night. The University of Illinois helped coordinate search efforts on and around campus. Yin Ying's family flew into the U.S., and a reward of $50,000 was offered for information leading to her whereabouts for oh. the local authorities received no leads. It was on the 12th of June, however, when the FBI discovered the surveillance footage capturing Yin Ying's last known location. They were unable to discern the license plate Wait, when number did they of the find vehicle it? from the footage. Yet How long did it take them? June, however, when the FBI discovered uh, month, the surveillance okay. footage capturing Yin Ying's last known location. They were unable to discern the license plate number of the vehicle from the footage, yet they were able to determine that there were 18 four-door Saturn Astras registered to owners in the state of Illinois. Rip, this, One of the owners wait. was 27-year-old Brent Allen Christensen, a this PhD takes place in student Illinois, at the University so. of Illinois, who had graduated with a master's degree in physics and who had been married for four years to his high school sweetheart, Michelle Zorn. Portman. Investigators interviewed him on June 12th and inspected his car. When questioned, he reportedly claimed that he did not remember what he was doing at the time of Yin Ying's disappearance, but Great also alibi. stated he was most likely sleeping or playing video games. Great the police alibi. took his contact information and he was released after just a nine-minute interview and a five-minute inspection of his vehicle. Two days later, upon reviewing the surveillance footage, investigators observed that the car's sunroof was similar to that of Christensen's, but more notably that the vehicle in the surveillance 
had Pretend a cracked hubcap, as did the vehicle of Christensen, and who at that moment became the prime suspect. I he was called in it. by police in the late hours of Wednesday night, June 14th, requesting that he come in to discuss what they stated was an important matter regarding Yin Ying's disappearance. Christensen agreed, and an FBI investigator picked him up from his home and drove him to the Champaign Police Department at around 12 a.m. Somebody picked him up? Why didn't he dr Well, I guess they made him come in. Fuck. Okay. Um, Your Uber driver, Agent Ramirez, is coming to pick you up. <laughs> You're being detained. <laughs> um, like I said, your home. Um, my name is Anthony Manganero. Especially with the FBI, I'm assigned here in Champaign. Um, and then uh, this is Eric. Yeah, he's tucked up Eric Stuyvesant. Detective with the uh, University of Police, okay? Um, we you have the right to remain the silent. Disappearance of uh, Ms. Ying Ying. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if Uber in the future, like, pings your phone that the police are in route? Like, a self driving car on behalf of the police come and pick you up and drive you to the precinct. And, like, Uber's just out loud reading your Miranda rights. I'm just saying that's possible someday like in the future like in the future we're gonna have like like people aren't gonna like the police aren't gonna approach suspects like literally robots are going to approach people like robots are just gonna be like you're under arrest people are gonna run away from fucking robocop have you seen that movie robocop blasts some bitches Okay? Are you going to run from a... I, I would not run from a fucking robot. I would not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, I would not run from a fucking robot. No fucking way. Just imagine. Just imagine you're in your house. You just committed a robbery and you're trying to lay low. And fucking goddamn RoboCop shows up and it's like, Get in the car. You're going to run? You're going to run from RoboCop. No chance. A self-driving car comes to your house, starts blasting your Miranda rights on the megaphone and calling you out into the entire neighborhood. Are you going to run? Like your entire neighborhood. Your entire neighborhood is going to know. You meant a car is going to pull up? Okay, but still, like, maybe they give them the chance to do something and, like, they're farther away, like, waiting to see if they react. Like, the car shows up and, like, says that thing, and then, like, the police are further out, like, in the backyard, like, waiting for the escapes. Imagine that. Imagine that. I'm just saying, if any, like, robotics developers are, are working with the police and also are a fan of my streams, I'm giving you, like, a billion-dollar idea right now. Like... Self-driving cars pull up, give give the criminals a, a chance to just willingly go into the car. It's not like they can take over the car. It's not like they can kill the driver and hijack the car. It's self-driving. What are they going to do? Fucking kill the car? Imagine that. Police get the person, detain them, and then just like put him in the self-driving car. And he has to sit there by himself. That's some fuck. That's some fucking psychology shit. Could you imagine? Could you imagine they stuff you into a police car and then you're sitting there alone as a car sends you to the police precinct and you cannot say any, nobody even, you can't even talk to anybody. Think about how terrifying that would be. Yeah, like elevator music's playing and you're just sitting here like. They would have so many people fold in the inter in inter interrogation room. Like so many people would fold. That's all I'm saying. Open the door and run out. It wouldn't be like they, they can't. They wouldn't be able to. Like they would child lock the back. 
the front would have like bulletproof glass so they can't like break to the front like imagine that'd be so i mean i don't think like like hijacks like that happen a lot i don't think people fucking resist after they get put into the police car but imagine like the the introduction to the police arriving to your house is just a singular police car unmanned it was self drove routed to your house and it's just like you have the right to remain silent andrew smith anything you say will be used against you in a court of law Anything you do will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney. If you request one and you do not have one, you can hire one will be present. Like across the street, like they're just yelling at you, like get in the fucking car. Police are like surrounding your house in case you try something stupid. That's kind of nuts. That'd be kind of crazy. There's a dude in my chat named Andrew Smith right now. Like, how the fuck did he know? How the fuck did he know my name? <laughs> how do he know what I've done? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Um, because we are in my offices and it's late at night, I'm going to read you your advice of rights, okay? Um, that's not a, it has nothing to do with the time frame that's that's just legal procedure that's the end of it um so i know that you spoke with my colleague joel um i've i've briefly been able to talk to him we've been kind of running all over the weird state. flex to take that chair away so kind of give me a a recap of, of what you told him i would i would appreciate it um our investigation as i'm sure joel probably told you is the disappearance of this woman uh this young lady and uh, it's like you don't get a fucking second co chair fuck you most viable tip that we have no backup chair for you bitch to a black uh saturn astra um so <laughs> uh, that's why you <laughs> why did he take the chair you away the other day um do you so weird you told him? And i'm not gonna hold you to it if there are certain details yeah. you forget uh so the came the suspect had just been read his rights and essentially made aware that he is now a suspect, yet instead of confronting the situation and demanding why he is being put in such an uncomfortable position at such a late hour, he calmly accepts and responds in a non-adversarial manner. Imagine yourself in his position. I'd be you have pissed. nothing to do with this young woman's disappearance, That's yet you are being you hassled innocent. and even accused by police in a passive yet blatant fashion. You would most likely demand to know exactly why you were being questioned in or, such a manner and exhibit some form of protest or objection at the current circumstances. They... Or you demand a fucking lawyer. Just checking out all of the Saturn Astros in the area. Mm -hmm. I know it's a pretty rare car, so probably the short lists. Um, yeah. He asked where my wife and I were during, I think it was two to three on Friday. And I mean, I graduated a couple weeks ago, so I'm looking for jobs right now. So, okay. I mean, I was either playing video games on my computer or taking. God damn it, dude. So, I was unable to purchase an alloy. I looked into certain... You guys are just in the way today. See if I could get some kind of... You guys are pointing at nothing, get fucked. some texts around that time, but none exactly between two and three. He stated that he was looking for texts that he may have sent during the time in question for the purpose of producing an alibi. Yet he was clearly unaware that police would later confirm that he was not playing video games at any point during the day in question either. Even when offline, digital forensics are Fuck able you, to chat. uncover the exact time a game was played and how long it was played for, which is far easier to determine on a computer than it is on a video game console like a PlayStation or Xbox. This would have very completely possible. refuted his alibi, as the suspect was smart enough to provide two possibilities. The narrative that he could have been sleeping at the time would still have credibility. Um, I let them come in the apartments. They searched for stuff. I let them come in the car. They searched for stuff there. Why does this um, guy interviewing look all eyebrows? Also, his suit is way too big. Okay. 
It looks I huge know. on him. Also, like, all I see is his eyebrows. Uh, what'd you, uh, graduate in? Uh, master's in physics. In physics? Yes. Wow, that's... Wow, a dork and a murderer. <laughs> what a great I'm combination. Not, I'm, I'm assuming that's over at the U of I there. Yes. Um, you Look how large that th this guy's uh, shoulders are huge. Can we talk about this interviewer? Like, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You guys are originally from there, or is yes. that okay? It's like this. Um, do you know what day she was uh, in Wisconsin? Um, what is he to the power of? Night, early Friday morning until Sunday evening. You mentioned that you thought you possibly sent text messages between you know the hours of two or three, so you weren't able to find any. Um, That's correct. Do you, do you recall um, any text message they sent that day, or like were there specific Oh yeah, there were one. I, I actually left, I, well I didn't, they didn't look through the phone, but I was showing them texts on my phone. Okay. Like, someone sent me a text at like 1.30, I responded at like 3.45 or okay. something like that, so um, there are texts around it. Yeah, but not, maybe not. Not just, exactly between specific. 2 and 3, and that's why I think I was probably... Why does nobody ask for a lawyer? Because lawyers have been demonized to be an admission of guilt by the police, which is not true. The police literally can do nothing against you for getting a lawyer. They can stall it, but they can't stop you because legally you're in your right to ask for a lawyer. Legal representation is available. You can ask for it. Police are not your friends. Anything you do or say will be used against you in a court of law that is in the Miranda rights word for word and they have to say it to you out loud. If you do not have a lawyer, a, one will be appointed for you. That is a public defender who will be assigned because they work for the state. If you have a private lawyer, you can call them, you can demand them, they can stall as long as they want, but you don't have to say anything to the police ever. And even if they pick you up, even if you're innocent, you get a fucking lawyer. I am telling you, it might save you jail time if the stars are unfortunately aligned that badly. Do you have to pay for it? I mean, of course. Probably. Public defenders aren't super, super expensive in comparison to privates. But you might pay some money and not go to fucking jail. You would rather do jail than pay. You would rather the police pick you up and accuse you of committing murder despite you not being the suspect. And instead of paying a lawyer like $1,000 for keeping you out of jail, you'd rather serve a minimum of 10 years in jail for murder if you were unable to defend yourself properly. You do know, like, the, the minimum jail time for most, like, egregious crimes is, like, 10 years, right? Like, minimum. Like, I'm not talking, like, you stay the night and they interview you. Like, if you do not, you can be dumb enough in an interrogation room to where the police really think you're the suspect. And they will persecute you and you will go into court and they will throw you in jail. If the police are that positive, I'm not talking about you stay overnight and they question you. I'm talking about they will put you in the fucking clink for years. Just get a fucking lawyer, dude. It's just not that hard. Shit's expensive, but you know what's, you know what sucks? having all of your freedoms stripped away because the police are fucking stupid and got the wrong person and convinced themselves they were the right person in order to help themselves career path wise because they're selfish and also prejudice and, uh, and, and barely have any knowledge outside of their training, which is minimum and they still abuse it. And they have a deadly weapon, which they abuse. You really want to give them the benefit 
of the doubt and the power in the situation? No. Don't. Get the fucking lawyer. You're going to potentially save your fucking life, or at least a portion of it. Probably lying down and sleeping just because, like, you know, especially now, I'll typically do stuff in the morning for jobs, apply to a few, mm -hmm. and, like, you know, I lie down to sleep, yeah. wake up, respond. It definitely fits. That okay. Way, so. um, was that kind of pattern of kind of looking for jobs, um, kind of having a little relaxation after graduation, was that typical of the, the entire week prior? Do police actually arrest people to further their career? No, they would never do that. You're telling me the police... Yeah, you might be surprised, but the police might pick up the wrong people and not care. In fact, they might just shoot them anyway for no reason. Almost like they're using extremely outdated tactics to stereotype people that don't need to be stereotyped because we just support prejudice and, and police profiling, which based on research has been proven as an ineffective tool for interrogation and investigation, but yet it is constantly encouraged by police education during their training. So yeah, maybe th th they might, they might suck a little bit at their job on purpose. Just a little bit. There was a cop recently who killed a person who said that they mistook their gun for the taser. A cop that was trained and on the force for years mistook her gun as a taser. Her bright yellow taser that all police departments have that is extremely obvious and also has a laser pointer and a warning before you shoot it that it's definitely the taser in comparison to the very black and very different looking gun. She shot the gun by accident, guys, instead of her extremely distinctly different taser. Yeah, they might purposely make mistakes. It, they might purposely make mistakes. It would be so weird if they did that. We saw a dude get sent to jail for 22 years because he had his knee on a dude on film. Saw he was being filmed and did it anyway because he thought he could get away with it. We might have an issue here. 22 is not enough for a dude who got caught killing somebody on camera. It's a start, but it, it should have been way more. The fact that that bastard is thrown in jail for the, for the most of the rest of his life is, is a big deal. Should have been more. But yeah, to answer your question, the police may intentionally do stuff to to benefit themselves rather than the people they're supposed to protect. Almost like the power has been all given to them and the regulations don't exist and we need to actually fix that before more people die for no fucking reason other than they feel like they're a fucking big dude in fat jeans and a lot of power with a gun that can destroy and do nothing better. Weirdly enough, we might need to regulate those people. Because, you know, just a, just a few too many people have died. And by a few too many, I mean literally all of them. Like, literally everybody. Anyway, enough of my... I might have a little thing against cops. I don't know if you guys have been able to tell. I'm going to play the video now. Looking for unfamiliar patterns in both the suspect and the missing person's behavior is routine procedure in a missing person's investigation. The question is posed to the suspect in a delusive manner, as anything he says at this point will not be taken at face value. The investigators will be relying solely on forensics and witness statements to determine any shifts in behavioral patterns during the week in question. Somebody just asked a question if you are innocent and put in jail and then released and found innocent and you sue. Um...
I'm actually not super positive. It's possible you can civilly suit the police precinct to seek monetary reparations. You might be able to sue the city. I don't think that's really going to do much damage to them, though. Like, you could probably sue them for some monetary compensation for the time you've had to spend, but... I think there was some dude... If I remember, I studied a case in college of some dude who had to spend, like, 30 years in jail because he was falsely accused of a murder and DNA evidence got him out, and he sued the city for, like, half a million or something crazy. I don't remember. Something like that. Don't know. Yeah, it happens a lot. You'd be surprised. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens a lot. People get thrown in jail for crimes they don't commit. There's a whole section of 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 studying and criminology based on you know how many people are were exonerated because of DNA evidence when we found out how to find fingerprints and and use hair for DNA and stuff. People are still getting free. People are still getting exonerated for false accusations because DNA evidence has helped them be proven innocent. And you know, you're never going to believe, you're never going to believe the main reason people are falsely accused and thrown in jail because the police just take the evidence they have and roll with it. The weirdest and most inaccurate thing ever is eyewitness testimony. And you know who gets thrown in jail a lot because of it? They get thrown in jail because somebody's like, I saw this person and they put him in a lineup and they point at the wrong fucking person because they picked up like three people and the eyewitness is like, it's that guy. And the police are like, well, the eyewitness said it was you. So you're fucked. Surely the guy who saw that wouldn't have a weird time recollecting because they can't remember shit correctly because it's hard for people to remember stuff in a stressful situation by super scrutinized details. And surely the police would know that and do something about it and not take their word for it and uh, do more to, um, to find out and make sure that that person is their guy, right? They would definitely do that. Nope. They don't care. Very cool. Some behavioral patterns during the week in question. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, do you remember specifically if you sent any applications out online or if you visited any places? On uh, Friday. Oh, job week? searching. Um, right. Throughout the week? Uh, I haven't had any in-person interviews. I had a phone interview on Thursday, and... Anything on Friday? Okay. Do you have any questions for me before, um... Um... Why am I... Eyewitness testimony is the worst form of evidence. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, a large portion. Uh, I mean, it is uh, a very unique car. Like I said, our search warrant is uh, is just for the car, yeah. so we can, yeah. you know, um, look into it. We can, of course, see what we can find, and of course, you could also turn around and exonerate you completely. I mean, talking about a very rare car. Yeah. So, um, the suspect cannot be detained at this moment and has just showed the first sign of contention. The first direct confrontation is yet to take place, and detectives will always plan for it to be initiated by them. For this reason, the lead investigator switches the suspect's focus to a less confrontational matter in order to put him at ease before the first confrontation begins. The detectives want to induce anxiety in the suspect, but it needs to be done at the right time to have the most advantageous effect. Uh, how long were you at the U of I? Did you undergrad there as well? No, I did my undergrad at UW Medicine okay. and I came here in 2013. Okay. I was initially in the PhD program, but decided I didn't want a PhD, so I just kind of left with the master's. Got it. Um, you like the campus? It's all right. Not too bad? It's all right. Uh, do, you, do you meet your wife there? Or? No, we uh, actually grew up in the same hometown, didn't really know each other until end of high school. Mm -hmm. So we both moved to Madison when I went to undergrad. Cool. Do you have any uh, questions, Eric? 
Yeah, the uh, when we were talking about uh, Friday, uh, the day in question on the night, uh, yeah. the night. Can you remember? You, you said you played video games all day on Friday. Yeah, is it true. just between the time period that he's asking about? Or just Me too. All day? Literally all day. Um, at the moment, I'm not really hanging out with too many people or talking to too many people. Um, my wife and the girl I talked to. Um, She's busy. My wife is out of town, so it's like, well, I'm alone today. So, uh, yeah. You, you didn't go cruising campus or anything? I did on Saturday, but yeah. I mean, even a little stir crazy, just decided to go for a yeah. drive on Saturday. But did um, you go out to eat or anything? Go like places? No, I didn't go out to eat. No. Why is he being questioned? Um. A month after this girl disappeared, the FBI picked up footage of her getting into a car and they found very little people um, in that area owned this car. And also on the footage, there is a distinct chip on a wheel um, that his car has. Whenever two investigators are conducting an interrogation, they will always decide which one of them will be initiating the confrontation beforehand. Experienced investigators are often familiar enough with nonverbal cues that even a slight pause or look will be enough to signal the start of the encounter. Look, you know that we didn't bring you all the way up here to talk about video games. What you had for lunch that day. Yep. Why do you think that we brought you up here? Because the car I own was seen picking up a girl that's missing. The confrontation is initiated in the form of a question, and a suspect is put on the spot. Instead of responding to the confrontation with a confrontation of his own, which is a common reaction for a truthful subject, he tries to give a justifiable that? reason what? as to why he is being questioned without acknowledging the severity of that same element. He's trying to avoid the confrontation. Okay, surely, like, surely they asked people to talk about the make of the vehicle, like, on the... I mean, this is like a month after, right? So like surely like the news like said something about the car and he knows because of some public information, right? There's no way. There's no way. There's no way he just did that. There's no way he ratted on himself without like it being like public knowledge, right? That was way too casual. I don't know. So who was driving that car other than you on, on Friday night? On Friday the, the night? It's, it, you're driving your car on the night, weren't you? Does anybody else have access to that car? No one has access to that car, okay. So how many sets of keys do we have in that car? Two. And where were they on the Friday? Uh, one. I would have had one and my wife would have had one. And hers were in Wisconsin, right? And what do you keep on that keychain? You keep both sets of keys, right? One for the Camaro, or do you have separate sets? Um, I have one keychain, but sometimes I take the Camaro. Keys out, but... Now let's talk specifically about Friday. Okay. You went to school for how long at the U of I? Since 2013. Since 2013. Yeah, so you're very familiar with our campus. Not really. I never really um, talked to anyone. So, so you're kind of a loner? Yeah. You've been there for four so years? on that day. Sure. When you, you originally sure. told the agents that came to your apartment that you just played video games all day long. You didn't leave the apartment. Yeah. But it's fair to say that we know that that's not true. Correct? Confrontation? Why would I lie? What the heck, bro? Uh, maybe there's some misunderstanding why, why we're here. Because like I said, we're- What we, the heck? I only said my car was the one, I, like the one near my car, the can, uh, yeah, same haystack. car. I, I'm sorry, let me take that back. We are Willingly. We're needle on a haystack. Yeah. But my point is, you're, you're making it sound like we're just, we're, we just 
randomly came across your vehicle of the 1400 Astros that are in the state of Illinois? I have so 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 what would have happened that day that brings us to you? Probably that I live in Champaign. The suspect once again refuses to acknowledge the severity of the confrontation and Fair. offers a justifiable reason as to why he is being questioned in such a manner. I mean, I've never seen one before, uh, an Astro. So... I don't even know what the fucking Astro no. is. What brand is that? Is Astro the brand or is that the type of car from some, some other brand? Believe me when I say that the full weight and force of the FBI is going to descend on that vehicle. That's the model? Right now, oh, it's a Saturn? Concern and why I've, been out I've never heard of a Saturn Astro. And these guys have been out to midnight every single night. Because we're trying to find this girl. Looking it up. It's raining outside. It's nasty. She's a foreign student. She's only been here for a few weeks. I don't want to find her. I'm asking for help. I know. I... I mean, I've got her getting into your car. I need to know why. There's Brent. I need, I need this car looks like a shitty Prius. You know where she went. If we could help her, we need it done now. Because we need, we need to move on from this. It, it's been like six days now. I don't know what to say. Sorry. And you've been at the U of I for how long? Three years. Three. And that you know what we do? I work <laughs> in the Texas Bureau of the U of I. And you know what we have access to? <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong here. Tell me I'm wrong here. Look at this. <clears throat> That's a Saturn Astra, right? That's a Prius. Does this not look the same? Am I crazy? They look so similar. <laughs> Cameras. Do you think that we're not gonna track a vehicle? all over campus. We control kiosks to bus stops. We can look in buses. We can look in every building out on the streets. And you're telling me that I didn't see you driving your car on Goodwin. That I didn't see you driving down Wright Street and turning on- This is in 2017. Right parking where everybody pays their tickets and driving down University to Goodwin and heading south and then you see her standing on that corner in that shade tree, didn't you? That's where you first saw her. And then you turned, you turned on Clark. I haven't saying anything. So. And we still have cameras. The, uh, I've seen the videos, but I didn't see me. Okay, so the videos You've are seen public. What allowed you to see. Can I see this stuff that you're talking about? No. You we brought you up here to show you <laughs> video. We want to we want to understand why you did it. Yeah. We want to understand why you stopped there to pick her up. Was it to give her a ride? Are you afraid to tell us that you gave her a ride? Maybe you want to make a couple bucks as an Uber. Why is the quality so shit in 2017? Because this is a camera in a police interrogation room. The police are busy funding weapons of destruction to kill people with, not technology and, and video cameras. Driver. And she told you I had to go get, I had to go sign a lease at One North. And you're like, oh, I know where that's at. I'll drop you off. If you're afraid to tell us that you gave her a ride someplace, we can work with you there. A familiar technique that has no official name, but is widely recognized and routinely put into practice. The detective is essentially trying to get one foot in the door by aiming for a lower level of initial admittance. He is aware the suspect is unlikely to provide an outright confession, but more likely to at least acknowledge that he was driving the car that picked up the victim, and even more likely to do so when afforded an exit strategy. He is also given a justification as to why he has been reluctant to divulge this information up to this point. You will now see the suspect start to 
physically shake as his mind races back and forth as to whether to take the bait or not. <laughs> Somebody in chat said caught in 180p. <laughs> But I know that you picked her up. I know you did. I saw you in your shirt, arms fully extended. I saw you in your shirt. How do you know? How do you know I had clothes on? Where did you drop her off at? She was looking for a ride. She missed her bus. She told me she was going to One North. So where did you drop her off at? I thought I was nude that day. Not the shirt and my arms extended. Like I'm driving. How'd he know? <laughs> okay. Wait. Remember the girl's name? Okay. I saw her picture. I don't think there's like a girl up. I don't remember where. Okay. I saw her picture. I don't think it was her though. Do you remember the girl's name that you picked up? No, she was talking very broken English. Okay. Tell us about what happened. What time of day was that? Early afternoon. I don't really remember. Okay. I was just driving around. Um, I saw. Yeah, I picked up a girl who couldn't speak English well. Who got kidnapped again? Oh, somebody who just got to America a couple weeks ago? Might be some... A different person. Different person. A foreign exchange student with minimal English and is, is studying abroad who probably doesn't know English that well? I, it's a different girl. It's not the same. It was in the same spot. And they're very similar, but she didn't look the, like she she didn't look the same. It's different. Different. Trust. A uh, girl, and she was very distressed. Okay. So I stopped my car and looked at her. Okay. And I asked her if she needed help. To it hasn't to even been long. twenty minutes, man's week. It's like it's it's midnight. It's it's twelve thirty at night. This dude's tired as fuck too. This is a great time to pick him up because he's probably pissed off because he got picked up while he was gaming. Okay, but why did you pick her up? Bro, conviction any percent is happening right now. When you say she freaked out, what did, what did she do? Did she, did she start throwing things at you? Did she scratch you? It looks like you have a scratch on your right bicep there. Is that I from... I scratched myself. That's from... Okay. So, Not really so how scratches out. work. So she's sitting in the front passenger seat of your vehicle? Also, how would he know he did it in his sleep if he was fucking Has asleep? anybody else sat in that front passenger seat since she got out of the car? Probably. Not with me, but with my wife, probably. I mean, so other than your wife, who, who else sat in the front passenger seat with you that you know? Um, maybe a guy she's hanging out with. Your wife? Yeah. Okay. Um, what a great marriage. Okay, this was her. I, I, and, well, and if it's it if it's her, not again. I want to find this girl because I know she's alone and scared out there and we yeah. don't have any contact with her. So you said you picked her up. Yeah. You went a couple blocks away to a residential area. Do you remember if you went north? I went north for sure. Okay. I mean, I know my personal preferences. Yeah. So. Okay. So you went north. So that, that was relatively close to Loomis. So. All right. To, to where? It was relatively close to Loomis. And some Loomis? Of the of that okay. Area. And she said something like, turn left after a couple blocks. Um. She said something else because that's really when she started freaking out. And she wanted to get out of the car, get out, try to pull in the door. It was locked because my the car had locks. Mm -hmm. I locked and she out. That was it. Wow, the car has locks? What a what a cool car, bro. No, I don't remember. Interesting vehicle. 
No, I don't. No way. What was her ethnicity? You said she had trouble speaking English. Well, she, she was Asian. Asian. She was Asian. She was Asian. Okay. Um, what was? What do you think? How old do you think she was? Was she? Do you think she was a grad student, undergrad? Was she? Um, I guess it was about twenty. Okay. I guess it was about twenty. Um, her hair length. Um, yeah, um, she looks just like the the person you're looking for, didn't speak English well, just like the person you were looking for, and also I picked her up on the same day in the same car on footage at the same place, but it's a different girl, guys. It, 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 it's such a weird, isn't this crazy? What a coincidence. What a coincidence. There's two people of the same descriptions in the same spot and the same car picks them up. This is, what a world, what a world, small world really. And, and the guy was also wearing a shirt. <laughs> uh, I have trouble telling Asian people apart from one another. Sorry. Well, you would remember no, this very specific though, because when you pulled up to her, you rolled your window down she leaned into your car so you were looking kind of a right weird comment face, but whatever i mean it is a weird comment but i will tell you psychologically people are better at distinguishing their own race than other races not that that's a excuse here i don't i don't know what his defense is in the first place he's uh He's just being like, oh, what a weird coincidence. The fuck? The fuck is this guy doing? Like, this guy is a weirdo. Like, he is. Not only is he admitting he's there on the same day this girl goes missing, he's saying the girl he picked up fits the exact description of the victim, but isn't the victim. And then he goes, oh, I can't tell them. A, I have a trouble telling Asians apart. What does that even fucking mean, dude? You could probably put like an ounce of effort and find any distinguishing feature off of two different people of the same race. Like that is... What does she have on her head? You were looking right at her. I mean, you don't remember? No, I mean, even so, I taught many, many semesters here, and a lot of the students were Asian. Okay. Was she wearing glasses? Did she have a ball cap on? The detectives continue to inquire over the missing person's appearance in the hopes that the suspect will give them an accurate response. If they can ascertain that the suspect's memory is clear enough to accurately recollect what clothing an individual was wearing at a particular time, it will enable them to cut through claims of a poor memory when inquiring into separate matters that occurred during that same time period. If the suspect is guilty, it would be in his best interest to continue to assert that he can't remember. He has already stated that she was Asian and had poor English, yet these general details are far easier to remember than particulars, such as specific articles of clothing, which detectives are now trying to trap him with. I love this guy. He's so smart. I don't remember that. So. What does she tell you whenever you roll down the window and you're chatting with her? You said she looked distressed. Um, that's my stuff. Do you remember specifically what yeah, um, she said to you? Um, I asked her if something was wrong. Um, what did she say to that? Uh, 
she said, I'm late, I need to get somewhere or something like this. I was not exactly out of it, but just kind of like, oh, I'm going to help this random person, so I'm going to help this random person. Um, so she said she was running late for something? Yeah. And, uh, okay. I'm going on another thing. Going on, a, weirdly enough, I want to talk. Um, I don't care how innocent you think you are or how smart and, and deceptive you think you are. You legally do not have to say anything in this situation. In fact, you can request somebody to purposely and educatedly tell you what you should and shouldn't answer. And he is like, he is giving them everything. Like, I don't care. The police do not care. If they think you are the suspect, they want you to talk. If you don't talk, they have nothing to work with. So they might not be able to detain you. And if they do, they don't have anything to give the prosecution. And the prosecution doesn't fucking know any better. The prosecution's gonna do their job and use the evidence they have to convict you because that's what they're paid to do. I'm gonna presume if this ever happens to any of you and you end up in a police interrogation room, I'm hoping it's as an innocent person or maybe an eyewitness. So I will tell you to get a lawyer. Just pay for it. Pay for the lawyer. Save yourself jail time. This guy has a master's degree in physics. You know how smart you have to be to get a master's in physics? And he is still this fucking dumb. He is still this stupid. It does not matter how book smart you are. You can be this fucking dumb. You can kidnap a woman and then shovel yourself into a fucking detainment by the police within 30 fucking minutes. Because you're a dumbass through and through. She said she had a meeting with her professor. When I told her my name, she didn't really hear it, so I had to say it again. Mm -hmm. Times. Not important, but whatever. Um, maybe I wasn't speaking properly either. Again, we really didn't talk about much. There really wasn't much said. Just, she looked freaked out, so I heard it right. So, how, how long do you think that she was in your car for? Less than five minutes. Not Less long at all. Five minutes. Not long at all. There's just a few blocks, and I apparently took a wrong turn compared to what she said, and that was enough to spook her. So when you crossed the railroad tracks, did you turn to the left or to the right? I don't remember railroad tracks. So good answer. You, you kicked her out of the car in a residential neighborhood. She got out of the car. I think. Oh, she got out of the car. She wanted to get out. Like that's why I let her out. Because she was freaking out. Yeah. Okay. And she was saying things that you didn't understand. Because you, uh, she, she thought you took a wrong turn. Yeah, and something, I don't know, something like that. So, yeah. When she tried to open the door, but again, it was locked. Because my car auto locks. Um, I was the one to get out. I'm not going to keep someone I barely know in my car who just wanted to be in there. You know, another girl. Um, so I her up. That was the last I saw. Ad played. Not a problem. Somebody asked if you're doing eyewitness, should you get a lawyer? Um, probably not. I mean, if you're if you're if you're an innocent 
person giving an eyewitness testimony, I mean, there's not much to worry about until you, the second you feel like the police see you as a suspect, you should request a lawyer and shut the fuck up. That's all I'm saying. I mean, like, I don't know. They, they have to read, they read you different stuff. Like you get read different rights as an eyewitness. They don't really read you rights as an eyewitness. If they read you any rights, if they say stuff like, uh, like they have to read you your Miranda rights. If you're being interrogated, like they have to legally police have to make sure who they're talking to knows the Miranda rights. So if that is not verbally consented to technically the court case can be thrown out and, and, and put to a mistrial, et cetera. Police have the right to deny letting you take medication if I'm if you're being interviewed. Uh no. I'm pretty sure there's something about that. If you refuse to talk, what would happen? Like if they question you, you didn't answer, what would they do? Nothing. They can't do anything. The police can't detain you without reasonable cause. And the only way they get reasonable clause or cause is evidence. Like on video or you saying some stupid shit. Or like maybe an eyewitness, which is shaky. You just, you shut up and you ask for your lawyer. They might keep you there. They might question you even afterwards, but then just wait. Just wait. They can't do anything. They like actually can't do anything, right? Like legitimately. Like, the police are sitting there trying to get you to, to give them evidence. So, like, my answer is the second you feel like they're questioning you as a suspect, which most likely they'll go over some Miranda right in order to, you, you it is within your light rights to ask for a lawyer. Wouldn't asking for a lawyer make you seem sus? No. To the police? Sure. Legally? Who fucking cares? You got an educated representative to save your ass out of jail. If the police want to be salty about that, of course they're going to be mad. Of course they're going to press you, and of course they're going to try to make you feel guilty for doing it. It's because they don't want you to. Because the police don't want you to be there with a lawyer who will tell you not to talk. They want you to talk so the police can tiptoe to the fucking prosecuting lawyer and give them evidence to throw your ass in jail. So of course they're going to make that seem like it's suspicious. But it's been labeled and demonized as a bad thing to do when it's legally the smartest thing you can do for yourself in that situation. Do not listen to that, that stupid stereotype of lawyers bad, lawyers good. They study for years to legally help you. That's the purpose. That's why they need to be present. Like, that's their whole point. Don't listen to fucking police making them sound bad in order so you are dumb enough to talk to them. The police are not your friends, and they won't be. They're not supposed to be. They don't want to be. They never will be. They literally want you to talk yourself into a hole they can dig you down into and bury you. Like, that is, their, that is why they want to fucking guilt you for that. Get the fucking lawyer. Don't let them... Just don't respond to them. Fuck them.
They're annoying. That the reason why innocent people end up in prison? Yes, partially. Because they go into a police interrogation thinking they're innocent, so they don't think there's a problem with them talking to the police, and then the police go, this guy's story doesn't match up and sounds a little suspicious, and, and we think he might be the one who did it, so we're going to keep him in jail. And also, because he thought he was innocent, and he might be, he spent all this time telling us all of these things we can use against him. And we're so convinced he's guilty, we're going to give it to the lawyer whose job is to throw you in jail because you talk to us, because we're your friend. You see the point I'm getting at? The, the police do not care. They don't care if you feel innocent. They don't care if you are innocent. If they think you're the, the, the criminal, they are literally going to do everything they can to keep you there, to make you talk, to make you feel bad for not talking, to make you feel bad for a crime they think you committed, to make you feel bad for having legal representation because they want to psychologically wreck you into talking. You literally, the Fifth Amendment gives you the legal right to have a lawyer present. It's not a requirement, but if you ask for it, it is. Don't listen to them. This entire, the, the, it, the fun part about watching these is how the police make this interrogation room seem so small and hopeless. It's all mental. It's all mental. Like, this is all they do. They try to psychologically fuck with your head to make you feel like you have to do this shit. You don't. You actually don't. Like, unless they have legitimate reason to detain you, which partially can only come from you speaking to them. Not all cops are bad. There are still cops who do their job. Don't put all cops in one category. Nope, they're all bad. They're all bad. And I'll tell you that as somebody who studied criminology. I had cops teach me. Doesn't matter. They're all bad. He was one of the nicest guys ever. Doesn't matter. You defend shitty people, you're a shitty person. You want to know what I studied half the time? How cops fuck up on purpose. You want to know what else I studied? How there's a specific stereotype surrounding police where police constantly back each other up no matter what happens. It's called the blue wall of silence. Look it up. Cops just back each other up because fuck it. You're a cop. So I'll defend you. I guarantee you some pretty nice people defended Derek Chauvin's actions when he on camera choked out George Floyd. They still are bad. They defended a murderer because he was them. And that's encouraged. That's encouraged by the police departments, all of them. They all do that. I don't care what you think. I don't care if you disagree. This is my stream. They're all bad. I've studied it. We've witnessed it. We witness it every fucking day at this point. We have to witness this every day. And they all back each other up. You know what happens? You know, you know, what, you know what usually happens when you see a, a problem occurring? Because you know, what, well, you know what people say? They go, oh, you, you know, it's just one bad apple in this tree. You, you, know, what, you know what happens when, when there is a branch that keeps producing bad apples? You fucking cut the fucking branch off. You don't go, oh, that apple was weird. 
I don't know why it keeps making bad apples. I guess we'll just keep it. Get rid of it. You know what happens to that tree if you just leave a corrupted part of it on there? The whole tree becomes corrupted. And they're all bad. They become, all of them become bad apples. Just to dumb it down for you. Because we're getting personal about a, a, a viewpoint of a job. When all they do is continuously abuse their power and fuck people over. Because the power was put in their hands and the regulations didn't exist. And now that the regulations ex are trying to exist, for some reason, there's a large amount of people who want to justify abuse and murder. And research is being put up. We filmed a guy literally killing somebody and people still defended it because of stuff unrelated to the incident. They tried to character assassinate the, the victim. If the apple's bad, the tree is bad. You prune that tree. You cut that branch. You fix the tree. You don't let the tree die. You don't tolerate the bad apple. You find where the bad apple came from, and you get rid of it. You literally remove it. How, how, what other analogies can I do here? You know what I mean? Like, why, why do we condone murders because there are good cops that exist? Think about that. You're like, well, you know, <sighs> Officer Frank killed a guy on footage, but, you know, Officer Dave is a nice guy. He helped me across the street one day. So, you know, not all of them are fucked up. What are you fucking talking about? What are you fucking talking about? Like what? <laughs> they're willingly dealing with it. Like they're tolerating it. A precinct will have a dude. Oh my God, dude. This is way not the same. You know what happened when, when Kobe died in his accident? A police officer took pictures of it. The responding officer took pictures of it. And you know what he did? He started bragging to people about it. And he started going to his precinct and shared the photos. He went to a bar, got drunk, and showed random people the photos who didn't ask. You know what the precinct didn't do? Shut that shit down. They spread the photos more. I'm sure all those cops might be good people. You know, it's not stopping a murderer, but they all fucking let it happen. They spread it amongst themselves. Kobe's wife is suing the pants off of that city and the police precinct, burying him in the ground justifiably. He got caught on footage doing it. All of the police in that section of the precinct's photos were taken and, and gotten off of their phones because they deleted them, but they didn't go away because phones don't delete info ever as we've been told and shown in these videos they are bad they tolerate bad they're bad it is not a two way like it's not it's not a gray area i know cops i was taught by them like but if something is awful, you find a reason to stop the awful from appearing. You know what your body does? You know what your body does when something is wrong? Your white blood cells respond to a viral signal that they don't recognize and they tried their best to remove it. Now imagine, which it, this exists by the way, there is a medical condition in which people's white blood cells don't fight off foreign things like viruses. They have a very hard time fighting off diseases, etc. Some of you might have it. Those people have a very hard time functioning. 
because there isn't a system for, for intolerance. There's no system in place for intolerance for them. That is the exact thing that's happening. There is not a system in place for the intolerance for abuse of power within police. It does not exist because nobody, like the people in charge, the people in police precincts, they don't want that because they want to get away with it. If you are complicit to shitty behavior, you are being shitty. There's a extreme lack of training within police. There's an extreme lack of conscious behavior and accountability within the police. How many, like... People are, people are getting killed unjustifiably every, like almost every day. Like, and, and we're questioning why police are bad when they constantly do it. I don't think it's a single bad apple, dude. I don't think there are good cops when the bad cops are allowed to do shit like that. The system in place doesn't allow those good cops to do anything about it. Why not? Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird how they are unable to be intolerant about it because there's a system in place where cops are obligated to support each other regardless of their actions? And if they don't, they're isolated, in fact, almost removed from their employment for being upset about a coworker of theirs killing somebody? Why the fuck does that exist? I don't know what my general point is. I feel like I've said plenty. I feel like I've said plenty to uh, show my feelings on the situation. It's really not my problem if that upsets you. It's really not my problem if you feel like cops are, are can be good. I feel like cops can do their job potentially if they were given the right tools. The problem is the cops were giving, given deadly tools with zero repercussions for their actions because they're heroic for defending us. Yet they will see a, a small child in a house or a kid in the street with a squirt gun and they will brutally murder them because, because they decided they were racist and that was a weapon. And they said, I'm a cop. I'm stopping a criminal because I'm a piece of shit who stereotypes of race. And this child is brandishing something that's definitely bright in color and not a gun. But my job lets me get away with killing people. And I want to do that. So they do. Because there is a system in place that allows it a group of people with a lack of to intolerance and legislative problems that don't get fixed. And it starts in the police precincts. The, the tolerance 
of shitty coworkers when there are lives at stake. It doesn't it's not your it's not your coworker slipping out of the tip jar. It's not your coworker taking free Starbucks coffee on their way out of work cuz they're a barista with you. We are talking about a dude using a firearm to kill another person. And because you work with them, we are tolerant of that. Why? That is not the same. That is not the same. That doesn't make him a bad apple. That makes him a piece of shit murderer we should throw in the fucking cell forever. But because you wear the same fucking badge that nobody gives a shit about, you're going to fucking find an excuse to defend him. Wrong. Let's watch the video. And you were by yourself. And you weren't playing video games all day. So why would you tell us that? Why would you tell the FBI that comes to your house that you were... Saturday. I don't... You didn't mess up the days. I mean, I thought I was doing it Saturday. So what did you think that those two agents were at your house talking to you about when they came over? Friday. That's why. I mean... Friday is a day? Or, Friday, or they're there to ask you if you picked up an Asian female and gave her a ride. About Friday. I mean, they were asking me about Friday between 2 and 3. So I told them. I mean, maybe I got my days mixed up. You know, I said a little bit ago. I thought I was doing this Saturday. But you didn't bother to tell them, oh, I didn't. I played video games all day Friday, uh, uh, detective. But I actually did pick up a female on Saturday. You, you didn't feel the need to give them that information? And it might be important. I mean... The lead investigator makes the mistake of interrupting the suspect during a direct confrontation. He is understandably getting impatient and is at this moment more focused on gathering pretext for cross-examination at a later stage. All right, so you go northbound through university. Where do you go next? Do you remember? I turned left. So it looks like I did go past, past university. Um, going to ask a personal question. Don't take it the wrong way. Is, um, you, you mentioned your wife on our vacation with another friend. Um, Notifications are off, yeah. Uh, there's another guy she hangs out with. You mentioned there's another girl you hang out with. Do you guys have a we're in, we're in very open relationship? relationship? Okay. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. She has a boyfriend as well. Okay. Um, so... Um, Okay. Kind of strained between us as well. Gee, I wonder why. Because it's not just a broken relationship, it's just a strain. So, um, sure. That's nothing to do with the fact that we're fucking other people. Um, yeah, I mean, how, how long has that been going on? That, that In a marriage, we've committed each other to. are now too. building a foundation for the reframing technique. The fact the suspect has been going through a rocky marriage will now be afforded to him as a justification for the crimes he committed at a later stage. I mean, like, I, that's so weird. I Like, polyamory, whatever. But... I don't know. I don't fucking know. That's so, that's so strange to me. They're married, but both in an open relationship. And I'm like... Aren't those, like, two different pathways? Isn't marriage, like, a very, like... I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not polyamorous. I don't fucking know. But I don't think an open relationship is the same as polyamory, right? Right, it's not. I don't get it. Open, open relationships. I don't get it. I mean, I don't. I don't care what everybody else does. It's. <laughs> I like. It. I just thought it was funny that he said that they're in an open relationship and have a. He has a girlfriend and she has a boyfriend, 
and there's a strain between them and then he had to he was like but not because of the open relationship he was like i have to i have to justify this hold on <laughs> this is funny yeah is it an open relationship like you could just I, I don't know is it polyamory like you have relationships with different people open open relationship is just like you you have sex with others right but you don't have like a, an actual relationship with people yeah polyamory can intersect too like you can have like the same like you and a person can be dating the same person right like it can be like three people together not like you go off and fuck some other person and come home to your wife this guy's weird can we just agree this guy's weird sexuality is such a, a, a an intricate thing but this guy's a fucking weirdo. It has nothing to do with this part. He's just a dumbass. And he's a gamer. Ew. Did she go to Wisconsin with a boy or another girlfriend? Guy. Did that, How'd that make you feel when she went away for the weekend? It was a long weekend with that guy. That would that would bother me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. I would not that like that. Normal human feelings. Did you feel hurt? I don't get it. Well, yeah, but I mean, she's been seeing that for a while. Um, but still, she's your wife, and it's tough. You know, even if you're in an open relationship like that where it's tough to see somebody you care about that you love to go someplace else with somebody else and not include you <laughs> i get that man brent why didn't you tell me the fbi was questioning you um because you were too busy up in wisconsin with chad fuck you beth <laughs> is that why you were driving around campus all day pretty much all day long on friday because you missed her that's what you get for not including me. That's understandable. Did you talk to any other girls that day? No. Did you talk to any other girls on Saturday? Or did you stay home Saturday? No. You think the boyfriend lets yeah, him play video games? Do you think he when stayed up late because he got to play because he wasn't they were out of town? When I was driving around, she was the only person I talked to. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Do you remember what time you started driving around campus that day? The suspect was driving around for over two hours before he picked up the victim, which was used to assert the argument that he was premeditating an abduction. Do you remember driving off campus in Urbana? Into a residential neighborhood in Urbana? If I did, it wasn't that far. Yeah, what if he was lonely because the boyfriend was gone? Yo, what a plot twist. What if he was lonely because the wife took the boyfriend away? Holy shit. Oh! <laughs> were, you, were you in Orchard Downs? Chad, I got a pee. Be right back. I'm sorry if an ad plays. I'm just gonna let it play while I go to the bathroom. You driving around Orchard Downs? I did go to Orchard Downs for a little bit, but there was construction, so I turned back. This was used to assert the argument that not only was the abduction premeditated, but he was specifically targeting a female of Asian ethnicity. So you were cruising around campus a bit, um, trying to clear your head. Yeah. Uh, your wife was up in Wisconsin with her boyfriend. While you're cruising around, you saw Miss Union. Um, she appeared very distressed. Okay. Is that correct? If that was her, yeah. I mean, I didn't have one. If I recognized her, I would have told the agents that came on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, that it was her. Okay. Like, because I knew she was missing. Um, 
I picked up an Asian girl. I thought she was about 20. When she said she was distressed, uh, or you said that she looked distressed, what did, what did she say to you when you rolled your window down and talked to her? Um, she said she was late for something. Other than that, did she, she tell you what, what it was? She or said she had that? a meeting with her professor. Again, my... theory is that she can get out of the car. Um, I'm just being open with you. My, my theory is she was in there a little bit longer. The lead detective is now using the same technique as the second detective used earlier to gain the initial admittance from a suspect. He doesn't directly accuse the suspect of abduction, but is trying to gain further admittance past what the suspect has already acknowledged, being that he simply picked up and dropped off Yin Ying after she panicked. We have 600 Chinese students that have volunteered to look for her. What I can tell you is that we will find her. Now when we find her is up to you. Because you know and we know that she didn't just get out of your car. So we need to know where she is now so that we can move forward from this. But if you maintain that she just got out of the car and walked away, it's very difficult for us to move forward. Were, were you hoping for um, just kind of like a quick tryst with her or see if, you know, trying to, trying to pick her up? I mean, that would have been nice, but... Do, do you have... I'm going to ask you a weird question, and you know, a lot of us have fetishes. How would you describe your relationship with your wife? Are you guys into certain things? Do you like porn? Do you like... Um, we're pretty vanilla together. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. We have some stuff in our apartment. I mean, do you have like certain types of people that you have fantasies about, that you might want to hook up with, you know. Not particularly, no. Oh, is that hungry? Well, I'm just about to take Okay. Yeah. I mean, have you ever, like, um, you do realize, like, everything you tell us, we fact check, regardless of what you tell us. So, yeah, like, stuff like uh, YouTube videos that you've seen okay. regarding Asian women. Do you like videos of Asian women? Like Korean women? Like K-pop songs and stuff? I mean, maybe. I like, okay, so I like all types of women. Okay. And that's, that's the truth. So I don't have an Asian fetish. But something drew your eye to her. Because you, you, you were cruising all over. And if she was truly distressed, I mean, there was an e-phone stand right behind her. She could have pushed that button and, and got help. And she didn't ask you for help, per se. She asked she needed to get to. She was late for something. Yeah. And that's, so you offered to give her a ride. Mm -hmm. You're a smart man. You have a PhD, right? Masters. Oh, you still got out Wow, of dude. What have I been listening to? So you have to understand. Guys, I have a wireless headset. I've heard all of this. I left and all of a sudden they're talking about porn, Asian fetish, and K-pop. What a weird time to disappear. I, I, dude, I leave at the worst times. The last time I did this, the fucking like shit hit the fan and I couldn't. Aww. Oh. My content. Uh. <laughs> How technology works. How do you think I knew that she Googled the address to One North? How do you think I knew that? One minute after getting in your car, how do you think I knew that? 
We know that you did. She didn't get out of your car. Utility. You need to be honest with us. Help us put this to rest. Help us bring her back to her family. You can do that. You can Utility do that. You can technique. Do it right now. There's no point. We know everything. I understand if you've had dark thoughts. I understand if you've been, been depressed. I understand if you've been drinking too much at times. I understand if you've had sadistic thoughts, wondered what it would be like to commit an act of violence. I know that temptation is out there. I need to find her. I know she got in your car. You went with her. You've been depressed. Your wife just left. This guy's breathing so hard. You see her. She gets in. She's vulnerable. Let me find her. I think I told you. Okay, so did she get back in your car then? No. Did you get out of the car and follow her? No. Definitely not. I didn't get on my car somewhere. No. Well, why not? Was it because of the kind of neighborhood you were in? I don't know anything about that neighborhood. So. Did um, she run away from you? Did she stand there? No, she stood there with her phone and I drove away. Did you, were you attracted to her at all? I did well not. Well, she's a good looking girl. Did the thought cross your mind? Yeah, the thought crossed my mind, but I probably haven't talked to anyone. I mean, maybe she's into that, is my point. And I'm not, I'm not judging you if she got in your car. He's giving that motivation, have, dude. I hate this guy. Vacation. You guys have, a, have some fun, roll, roll around. Have sex, consensual sex. Go wash my hands. I actually didn't wash my hands. I actually rubbed my asshole. Something happens. You panic. Is that a possibility? You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. So you're telling me you never had sex with her? I never had sex with her. Never penetrated her with your fingers, any of any parts of her body, with no. your penis, no. with your fingers. <laughs> no. Never had sex. Did you kiss her? No. Did you like it? Uh, can um, uh, do, can can uh, can you do that to me? <laughs> Why would he be so specific? With your penis? <laughs> can you elaborate for the interrogation? <clears throat> With any fingers? None? Two? Five? We need to know for the police and uh, the witness testimony. You look very kissable. Are you sure she didn't want to kiss you? I'd kiss you. If you want to. <laughs> Are you afraid? Are you afraid to tell me if you did? Because it, it seems like you're you're trying to think. Yeah. Instead of just answering the question. I don't want to tell you I had sex with a woman. That'd be embarrassing. Three steps forward. Well, like where I'm going with it, and I think I've demonstrated enough. I've shared enough. I don't want to ruin my chances with you. That you know that I know. That you, you didn't drop her off in that in that neighborhood. <laughs> you, you know that we can follow.
follow her phone. Okay. So where did you drop her off at? <gasps> Guys, if I ever get picked up by the police for something I didn't do, I might just hard flirt with the police officer and see what happens. So if you guys ever get like public police footage and I'm the one being interrogated and I'm just like hard hitting on the police, don't think of anything. Don't think anything past it. I just want to see what would happen. Okay. I think it'd be very funny. <laughs> The suspect maintained his innocence and was released without charge, but was immediately placed under surveillance at the completion of this interrogation. Four days later, the FBI reached out to his girlfriend, Tara Bullis, who agreed to wear a listening device and attempt to get him to open up about Yin Ying's disappearance and his potential involvement. This arranged strategy turned out to be a total success, and Brent Christensen was arrested on June yeah. 30th, exactly two weeks after his interrogation. An FBI agent testified that Brent Christensen's girlfriend became a key part of the case when she agreed to record conversations she had with him in the weeks following Ying Ying Zhang's disappearance. A total of nine recordings came from that. At first, he denied guilt and told her everything would be okay. But then on June 29th, after a night of drinking, he described killing Zhang in detail. Investigators say the final recordings were made the day of a memorial walk and concert for the missing Ying Ying Zhang, an event that Christensen actually attended with his then girlfriend. What he didn't know is that girlfriend was wearing an FBI recording device. Why would you do that? On the walk home, the two began to talk about the crime. I cut her clothes off and just started doing stuff to her, he said. Earlier in the conversation, he said, she was resilient. I tried to choke her to death, but she didn't. I choked her for what must have been 10 minutes. Then I released her, her breath. I couldn't believe she was still alive. Christensen said yeah, he hit sounds Zhang like you're in pretty the head shit with a bat and stabbed her, and she was still alive, so he decapitated her. Prosecutors say the recordings show that Christensen bragged about killing 12 other people, but they have no other evidence of more victims. What? Yang is the only person that has produced evidence that leads back to me. Number 13, he said. I've been at this since I was 19. He told his girlfriend he had been wanting to talk to someone about it and he wanted to kill more people. I still want to do it, he said. It's my legacy. And as if this has not been hard enough for Zhang's family, some of them were in the courtroom today. Zhang's father kept his eyes closed during that recording. Christensen was mostly expressionless. His defense team has tried to paint him as oh. a man with mental health and substance abuse issues who does not deserve the death penalty. The trial continues next week. It's a step toward justice for Ying Ying Zhang, the man who kidnapped and killed her. Holy. Good evening. I'm Paul Cicchini. And I can't I'm believe Jennifer it. Roscoe. A jury took less than two hours to convict Brent Christensen of abducting and killing Zhang and lying to the FBI about it. She was last seen June He 9th, folded in 30 minutes in the interrogation room. I can't believe he got Black put in jail Seven quick as fuck, too. Campus. Christensen faces either life in prison or the death penalty. Brent Christensen, the convicted killer of Chinese scholar Ying Ying Zhang, will spend the rest of his life in prison because a federal jury couldn't decide if he should be sentenced to die. The judge certainly didn't mince words in his final statements. CBS 2's Tara Molina is live in the newsroom with more on that decision Let's hear it. tonight. Tara. Erica and Brad, this is, the, this is the same jury that found Christensen guilty of kidnapping and killing Zhang. They couldn't come to a unanimous decision on the death penalty. And the judge certainly didn't mince his words. In his final Let's statements to Christensen, he said, quote, The mercy extended to you by this jury is a testament to their humanity not your character. Brent Christensen is currently serving his sentence at the Maximum Security Statesville Correctional Center in Illinois. Despite the FBI recordings, he maintains his innocence to this day. The body of Yin Ying Zheng is yet to be recovered. Ugh. Damn, that's fucked. Bro, that went from like... That was like, yo! That shot up in the air, dude. That was a that was a lot. God damn, bro. What an idiot. 